Hi and welcome to this video. In this session, I would like to show you how you can add a product in Shopware 6 using the administration. So let's get back to our demo store, which you know from the previous videos. So this is our demo store, uh, as you've seen in different other videos. And you might also remember that we created a test category in one of the previous ones. In addition to this demo store, in the meanwhile, I also created another sales channel, a classical storefront based on the same uh, theme called Brand Shop Summer Vibes, which I will be using later on when allocating products. But let's go back to our administration, which you can call it slash admin. The uh, products module can be found at catalogs, products. Here you see all of your active products and you can also adjust them in terms of the listing clicking on this button. So you can potentially act deactivate or activate further, um, further columns in your listing or you can switch also the order of the uh, columns in this listing. Adding a product is very easy. You can simply click on add product or you can use the shortcut, which you, remind, which you might remi uh, remember from the initial video on uh, the introduction of the administration, which was pressing the keys A and P. And the new product window opens. So what can we do now? How do we add a new product? In my case, I want to add the product Firebowl. So I give it the title Firebowl. And now you can uh, do the description, which you already know from the description text of categories. So this is a cool fire bowl for a romantic fire in your garden, for example. You can do all the settings which you already know from the categories module. So doing a bit of structuring, giving uh, it headings and paragraphs, you can make it bold, etc. You can do the orientation of this text. You can add um, links, you can add tables, and you can also embed your own code uh, clicking on this button. But for me, that's it for now. Then we get the product numbers. Um, the, this pro type of product number comes automatically with Shopware, but you can also create your own product numbers with the product ranges or number ranges, which you can find under settings and then shops. So that will automatically be generated here and um, yeah, come with the next number with the next product. You have to allocate a manufacturer so you can previously create them under catalogs manufacturer. And then you allocate the manufacturer here. In my case, the manufacturer, which I would like to add, allocate is Barefoot Living. There you go. Down here, you activate the product. So by default, it is activated. So if you save the product with the respective um, information needed to be saved, it will be automatically displayed in the front end in the right uh, category and sales channel that you uh, linked it to. You can also deactivate it and do further adjustments before putting it live. And then there's a promotion, product promotion um, feature here. If you activate it by clicking on the little button here, the product will get a yellow badge uh, for more attention in the storefront. We can look at it uh, later when the product is live, how this looks like. Then we have the price uh, configuration where you can give everything in terms of price, uh, gross and net, tax rates, uh, purchasing price and list price. So let's do that. In my case, um, the tax rate I want to allocate is the standard VAT. VAT, by the way, uh, or the tax rates can be uh, configured under settings and then shop settings taxes. Here you can give a standard VAT and then allocate uh, multiple countries that you work with and adjust the standard VAT. So in my case, I have a UK or an English sovereign, so I want the standard VAT 20%, but for German, it could also be 19%, for example. Then you allocate the gross price. Um, in my case, that would be 199 euros. And as you saw, automatically the net price is calculated with it. You could also give the purchasing price and a list price in gross and net. List price, you always use list price if you want to indicate that this um, product is a sale item. So for example, my, uh, my price here that should be displayed is 199, but I could indicate that it is a reduced price coming from an initial price of 249. 
for example. If you work with the list price, you will also automatically get another batch for the storefront for the category listing, uh, which is indicating that it is a sale item. So a red batch with a sale, um, with a sale icon. But for now, my product isn't uh, on sale. So it just has the usual price of 199 euros. In my storefront, as you might remember, I not only have euro, I also have pound. So I also want to set um, prices for the different currencies. This can be done on, on a currency depending pricing. So now all of the different uh, currencies that you have activated for your shop in settings shop currencies can be allocated or can be adjusted here. So uh, by default, um, the exchange rate for pound in terms of euros, because euro is my base uh, currency here in this shop, is taken. So thus you don't have a very beautiful price. So 177 pound and 42 cents is not a very psychologically relevant price. So I want to um, adjust this simply typing in my desired price. And again, the net price is uh, automatically um, calculated. And this can be done for all of the currencies I have. So thus you have the flexibility to really have different price lists for your different uh, currencies, which is great for internationalization, of course. Then we get to the section deliverability. Here you enter everything around your stock. So in my case, 100 pieces of the fireball should be uh, in my warehouse. Shop will automatically adjust the available stock. So just in case you have some open orders where stock is already blocked, but not has been worked on. So you have always the real, uh, real in reality available stock indicated here. You could activate clearance sale, which means that back orders are denied. So if you have activated this field, you can only sell as many products as are actually available. You can set the delivery time here, which you set in the general settings under shops as well. You could set a restock time in days, for example, when your product is sold out. You could mark free shipping. So for each product, you could uh, activate this. You can have minimum or maximum order quantities. So for example, if you want to limit uh, how much a customer can buy uh, on their product, so for example, in Corona times, if you're selling toilet paper, maybe you want to give a maximum order quantity here. And you can define purchasing steps. Then we get to the section assignment. This is relevant to assign the product to the right categories and sales channels. So in my case, I want to allocate the product to the previously created category test category. You can simply do so by uh, checking the checkbox here. And thus it's also very easy to allocate products to multiple categories. And this holds true not only for one shop, but for other shops and other storefronts, other sales channels that you maintain from this installation. In my case, as I said in the very brief introduction, I also created the brand shop and this brand shop also has category test category. So I also want to allocate it to this test category. And you can see here that the categories have been allocated. And thus I also need to allocate the right sales channel. In my case, the demo shop where the test category is in and the brand shop where the test category is in. And in addition, you could now also allocate or stream this product to other channels. Like for example, your Amazon um, marketplace channel or your Google shopping export or also a headless channel, for example, if you have a voice commerce integration, for example. In addition to that, you could also allocate tags with a category test category. I set up the tag summer campaign, which I want to allocate here as well. Next up is media. Here you upload your different uh, files, your different images for your product. So you can upload the file or you can use one which is already stored in the media section. So in my case, I know there's already a fireball in there, which you can then just drag and drop and it is allocated. Next up is labeling. Here you can give indication on the release date if a product has not been released yet. You can enter an EAN number and a manufacturer product number. And then we have the SEO and canonical URL section for your SEO um, improvements. Um, this is very similar to the one you already know from the category management. So you can give a meta title, meta description, SEO keywords, and again, can maintain the canonical URLs here. 
In the next section, it's all about measures and packaging. Here you can give all different information on your product. So in terms of width, height, length, weight, etc. And then after you stated this, you can use this information, for example, when setting up a shipping cost, which is based, for example, on weight. If you're selling very uh, heavy products like fridges, for example. Next up is the assignment of a custom product template. We have already created two uh, templates here. So what is custom products? Custom products can actually be found at catalogs, custom products, and here you can customize your products according to different options. So for example, you could enable uh, an engraving on a ring, for example. But I will be talking about custom products in a different video. So please make sure to look this up too. After you created those templates for custom products, you can then allocate them here in your product fireball, for example. Last but not least, you have reviews for this respective product, which you can see activate or deactivate. And now let's save the product. By clicking the save button, you see that additional tabs pop up. Let's have a look at them in a bit. But now we want to see if Fireball is now live in our test category. So let's go to the front end, click on test category. And as you see, okay, perfect. We have added the Fireball here. So thus it is um, displayed with the respective pricing um, here in the right category. Also, one explanatory hint, we have uh, the hint badge from the promotion uh, product uh, button, which we activated, and new products are also displayed as new with this green badge. What's also kind of interesting is if I change to euros now, you see that I get the beautiful euro price here displayed as well from the currency dependent pricing. Same what's true for my brand shop, where I also allocated the fireball to the test category. And here it goes. Great, let's have a look at further adjustments we can do on products. For example, advanced pricing. Advanced pricing is based on rules. So you might be familiar with our rule builder. If not, there's another video coming up for the rule builder. So please make sure to check this out. In this case, I want to set up advanced pricing, but only for my demo store sales channel and not for my brand shop sales channel. So let's uh, pick the respective condition, which I already created. In my, case, in my case, sales channel is demo shop. And now we can do some advanced pricing here in, for example, in terms of tiered pricing. So let's assume for demo shop, I want to have the pricing of 199 euros, but only from one to four. And for pound, I want to have the 169 price. And as of five, it should be reduced. The price should be reduced. So in my case, 179 euros. And here, let's adjust that as well, 149 uh, pound. So let's save that. And let's double check in the storefront. So again, this should only be applicable for sales channel demo shop. So let's go to that and let's adjust here and reload the test category. And you can already see, aha, perfect. I have tiered pricing here for euros as well as for pound. Perfect. On the item detail page, it looks like this. You get a little uh, table displaying the different tiers of pricing. But let's double check. This should not have any effect. Let's reload on the product which is allocated in the Summer Vibes brand shop. Perfect. So here we have the initial pricing, pricing that I set up without any further advanced pricing. And this is quite handy because if you, for example, want to internationalize and you have different products um, in your local shop, but also in international shops, you might want to uh, use this flexibility to display different pricing to maybe enter a market more easily by having uh, a lower price displayed. Let's have a look and continue at the other tabs that are available after saving the product. We have property assignment. Here you can allocate different properties. Properties can be uh, created under catalogs, properties. And you can simply pick um, the different properties here and allocate the different options. By doing so, the customer in the end in the storefront has the opportunity in the category listing to filter according, those, uh, according to those properties. So let's have a quick look. Let's go back to test category. And you see here are some 
properties that have been allocated to the products in this category, for example, color. We see those beautiful color patches, uh, swatches, and now you can simply, for example, choose the blue one and the example dress in its variant blue pops up. Same would true, for example, for aqua. The shorts here in aqua pops up. So this can be achieved by allocating properties under property assignment. Next up is the variant generator to convert your uh, simple product into a configurable product. Simply click on start variant generator. And then again, based on uh, different properties and different options in those properties, you can then generate uh, different variants. For example, different colors mixed with different sizes and then all of the different variants are generated. In my case, Fireball is a simple product. Last but not least, we have cross-selling. Cross-selling obviously is very important so that you can increase the average order value, not only buying the simple product, but maybe also some of accessory products that we want to link on the product detail page. So how can we do that? Let's add a new cross-selling. You can actually do that by allocating a product group as a uh, cross-selling. A product group is a dynamic product group. is the same as you might know from Shopware five times uh, called customer stream. So as you can see here, I could now allocate one of the existing ones, but let's make a small example for our cross-selling of the fireball. So you can find the dynamic product groups under catalogs, dynamic product groups. I would like to open it in a separate tab and make a small example for you by clicking on add dynamic product group. And in my case, it should be all products, not from shop of food, but all products from barefoot living, which is the same manufacturer as my as uh, is uh, allocated to my fireball. You can add an internal description. By the way, the name of the um, product group is then displayed in the cross-selling. So please be advised to take a name which should be popping up uh, in the storefront. And now you can use conditions to group products together. This is the same logic as you might know uh, from the rule builder already. So here, if I click on the conditions um, area, you see what kind of different conditions are available on product and all of the details around a product. So for example, I could allocate different products now and then group this group as accessory products. But in my case, I don't want to search for individual products, but I simply want all of the products from the same manufacturer, namely Barefoot Living. So let's go to uh, manufacturer. And then choose is equal to, and then you get access to all of the maintained uh, manufacturers. In my case, they are foot living. That's how easy it gets. We save the product group and now have all the products from Barefoot Living uh, in one place. Let's go back to our Fireball product and actually activate the cross selling. So in my case, it is other products from Barefoot Living. Position could be added, um, there could be, uh, the sorting can be configured. And now we should have, yes, all products from Barefoot Living. You can set a maximum amount of products and you can also have a little preview of all of the products which are in the dynamic product group, which is allocated here. Perfect, I want to have those. Thus I activate it and I save it. So let's go back to our front end and click on the detail page of the Fireball and as you can see now here, we have a separate tab, other products from Barefoot Living, and thus the customer um, becomes aware of other products which might go together very nicely with this Fireball. So that's a little video on how to add products and configure our products in a further way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.